There's no such thing as a slump. That's just an excuse that people use. There's no mysterious force of nature casting a spell down on you and making you play bad. Or it doesn't even have to be play bad. It, it, not play up to your potential. And you know your own potential. Uh, there, if you're if you're not reaching your potential, there's a reason for it. It's just uh, you haven't figured it out yet and, and adjusted it. So when you come out of this so-called slump, it's because. Hopefully, you figured out what you were doing wrong, you adjust it, and so now you should be a better player than before you went into this. And a lot of times it's just your concentration level. You know, you're just, you're not feeling it because you're not, uh, you're not into it, or something's on your mind, or... It could be a million things. You didn't get enough sleep. You ate something that didn't agree with you. You, you know, you drank too much the night before, whatever. And that all comes down to like this mental lack of concentration. Look at my hair. I should be shot. I shouldn't say that. There's people that actually want to do that. I'm going to cut my own hair later tonight. So as you're stepping up to the table or, you know, as you're waiting for your opponent to, uh, to screw things up and give you a shot, um, this is the first thing you should see after the balls are broken. So do I have a shot on the one? And the answer is yes, and we can easily get to two. Is there any problem balls on this table? Are there any balls tied up? And the answer is yes, this 3-5 is tied up. And I'm not sure if there's an open pocket on this whole table for this three ball that has to be contended with. And at first I thought about playing on the left hand side, just a hair on the left hand side of the two ball in order to knock that, that those tied up balls out. What's the best way to get from the eight to the nine? We need an angle on the nine. So where's the seven? Will the seven Give me that angle, and the answer is yes, as long as I get a little bit on the right-hand side of the 7 ball. Can I get from the 6 to the 7? Yes. Uh, can I get from the 5 to the 6? And the issue goes back to those balls being tied up. So those balls have to be knocked out as soon as possible. There's just no doubt about it, but hang on a minute. There is a doubt about it. And later on, well, a couple seconds later, before I shoot the one, I take a good look at this 3-5. And there is a carom, not a billiard, a carom. Uh, if, if I get behind the three on this side of the three, I can shoot that combination into the four and carom off the four and make that five. Then the big issue is getting back on the three on the right side of the three. And it's a little bit hairy because I'm not exactly sure where the four ball is going. A lot of it depends on how hard I hit this combination or how soft. So the big issue at hand, since I don't have to knock those balls out, I, I don't think at this point, um, is getting from the one to the two. And the best thing to do here is, is to play a little bit on the left-hand side of center table on this two and that should allow me to get behind the three.
good. Uh, my big uh, issue there was not letting the four ball get away from me. So now the big thing is getting straight in on the four. If I can hit a stop shot on the four, I'm right on the six. And you know the rest of the story. And also on this uh, on this eight, uh, just shoot to get in a position where you can get center table on the nine ball. Guys try, you know, see me pointing right there. Guys try uh, too hard to get straight in on a nine, and it's absolutely not necessary. There you're seeing me look at the line on the seven to make sure I'm on the right side of it. Well, it's the same set of questions with every game and every table. Uh, do we have a shot on the one? The answer is yes, um, but it's going to be really difficult uh, to get on the two right and shoot the two right to get on the three. Uh, can we get from the eight to the nine? And uh, this is this is going to be tricky. Uh, this is not an easy rack here. Getting from the eight to the nine is not an easy situation. So the short answer is yes. I can I can get from the eight to the nine. Of course I can. It's just going to be a little bit hairy to do it. Um, can I get from the seven to where I want to be on the eight? And the answer is yes. Can I get from the six to the seven? See, and they, we're going up and down table here, which is really complicating things. And um, the six is in a nasty spot, and that brings up: Are there any problems with this table? And, and I, yes, there is. And it's it's that the eight ball is in the way of both the five and the six. So we have to come up behind the five and on the right hand side of the five to get a shot in this pocket on the six so we're shooting both the five and the six in this corner pocket and it's it's really complicating things and calling for perfection so the key is going to be uh, to get right on the four in order to get behind the five and on the right hand side of the five so I can get on the six and on the left hand side of the six so I can get back down table on the right hand side of the seven to get back up table for the right spot on the eight. That's going to be tricky. So whew, let's go ahead and roll.
If you ever go to McDonald's and you get your meal and you pull over in the nearest, you know, parking spot that you can find, and you start eating it and you look at it, and you ask yourself, why the hell you keep coming back here and eating this dog food? It's not good food, folks. It's just not. Um... There's a reason you keep going back there, and, and the key to it is analyze what you were thinking and what you were feeling before you decided to pull over and eat this crap. There's no company in the world better at marketing than McDonald's. And I don't know if it was just a happy accident or they just capitalized on something that they knew that you probably don't. But what's, what's subconsciously happening in your head when you first decide to, you know, get off the exit or, or you know, pull over and go in there and get in that drive through um, They've associated their product with color, had bright colors, happy times, playgrounds, um, just a good overall feeling. You know, you saw the yellow and red sign and it just automatically associated, made a connection in your brain to smiling faces and laughter and, uh, and then you associate that with your food and it just, the connection, once, once you're eating it, they don't really care. They What, what they want is your money. Um, so, yeah, they they associated their product with them pretending they care. Somebody cares about me. They're feeding me a pickle burger. You know? Um, it's just, it's the way they associated everything with, with good goodness. Good, you know, Americana goodness. Family and friends. Coca-Cola so, uh, yeah. Now, what the hell does that have to do with pool? And it has everything to do with pool. You have to do the same thing with your pool game. You have to associate it. So, what, when you're in a pool room and you're not playing up to your potential, then the whole thing is just miserable and you're just banging your head against the wall and you don't know why you keep doing this to yourself, but there you are the next day at the pool room. And it's because of what you were thinking and what you not just thinking but feeling um, before you decided to go to the pool room. You pictured yourself running racks and you felt the rhythm of the game and you heard the clicking of the balls. The same exact thing McDonald's did to you. They got in your head. And that's why you're there. You know, if, it, if you had associated with, you know, the misery of missing and miss killing and losing and playing bad, you wouldn't be there, but you're there because right before you decided to go there, you saw and felt and believed that the risk of sounding like a self-help book, you believed, you saw it in your head and you believed it and you felt it and you felt one and that peace and you heard the sound and you saw the colors and the lights and the drinks and yeah that's why you're there guys it's not to play bad miss crew you saw good things you associate pool with good stuff friends and laughter and girls and yeah so the title of this video is how to flake all the damn flake off uh, and that's not stalling from the color of money people were using that term since they figured out how to talk and communicate. So I want to show you how to flake on and flake off at will. This isn't done so you can go out. You go out and hustle the old-fashioned way today and you're going to get your head blown up, dude. It ain't like it used to be. So don't do that. When you, let's say you miss a shot, okay, and you're supposed to make the shot all day long, or you just miss position, or you miss cue, or you, you just did something stupid. 
And so what happens from, at that point right there is you start getting down on yourself and those voices in your head are going, oh god, I hate this fucking game, I hate this, I hate these people, I hate it, I just, I, I quit, I'm gonna quit. There, right there, you're flaking off, buddy. You're flaking off, and this is what you have to do. You have to take yourself aside and go out in the parking lot and smoke a cigarette. Or go up to the bar, tell your opponent to hang, we're going to the bathroom, do, do what you gotta do, just kind of break away from your surroundings and if you want to flake back on and start playing good what you need to do is reassociate the game with everything that got you there the thought and the feeling and the belief of running out and hearing the sounds and doing what you do you got to get in your own head the same way McDonald's did